Maple Sun D is an efferent reservoir system where the reservoir bag is placed on the efferent limb, that is, expiratory part of the tube or away from fresh gas flow. Same configuration is seen in E and F. Maple Sun D is the most efficient system during controlled ventilation. Classic form of Maple Sun D has a 6 mm tube that supplies the fresh gas from the machine. It connects to the T piece at the patient end and the other limb of the T is attached to a wide bore corrugated tube to which the reservoir bag is attached. The expiratory valve is positioned near the bag. The modified version of Maple Sun D called Bain's circuit is the one used clinically. Bain's system was introduced by Bain and Sporl in 1972. In this circuit the fresh gas supply tube runs coaxially inside the corrugated tubing. The diameter of the outer tubing is 22 mm and the inner tube is 7 mm, length of the circuit is 1.8 m. Outer tube is transparent so that the inner tube can be seen for any disconnection or kinking. Length of the circuit can be increased to modify it for use at remote locations. It also prevents cluttering of fresh gas entry point at the patient end like in classic Maple Sun D. During spontaneous respiration APL valve is fully opened. The patient inspires fresh gas from the circuit and excess gases are vented out through the APL valve during expiration. In controlled ventilation the APL valve is kept partially closed and the patient is ventilated by squeezing the reservoir bag. Here excess gases are vented out during inspiration. So, during spontaneous ventilation, the gas is vented out during expiration and during controlled ventilation, the gas is vented during inspiration. We will look into the in-depth analysis of this circuit next. When the patient inspires during spontaneous respiration, the whole circuit is filled with only the fresh gas. This gas flows into the patient on inspiration. During expiration, the expired gas gets continuously mixed with the fresh gas and flows back into the corrugated tube and the reservoir bag. When the bag is full, the APL valve opens and the excess gas is vented to the atmosphere through this valve. After the expiration, the fresh gas continues to flow and fills the proximal portion of the corrugated tube. During the next inspiration, the patient breathes fresh gas from the inner tube as well as the mixed gas from the proximal portion of the corrugated tube. Many factors influence the composition of the inspired mixture. They are fresh gas flow rate, respiratory rate, expiratory pause, and tidal volume. If the fresh gas flow is high, that is, 1.5 to 2 times minute volume, patient will inhale only fresh gas from the corrugated tubing, and if the fresh gas flow is less than 1.5 times minute volume, some expired gas containing CO2 will be inhaled along with the fresh gas causing rise in end tidal CO2. Fresh gas flow should be at least 1.5 to 2 times the patient's minute ventilation in order to minimize rebreathing to acceptable levels. Based on body weight, recommendations for fresh gas flow are 150 to 200 milliliters per kg per minute to prevent rebreathing during spontaneous respiration. To facilitate intermittent positive pressure ventilation or controlled ventilation, the expiratory valve has to be partly closed. Upon squeezing the reservoir bag, the fresh gas from the corrugated tube flows into the patient. The pressure in the system also increases which open the APL valve and the contents of the reservoir bag are discharged into the atmosphere. During expiration, 
the expired gas flows down the corrugated tubing. It gets mixed with the fresh gas that is continuously flowing into the tubing. During the expiratory pause the fresh gas continues to enter the tubing and pushes the mixed gas toward the reservoir bag. During the next inspiration, as the bag is squeezed to ventilate, pressure in the system increases, the expiratory valve opens and the contents of the reservoir bag are discharged into the atmosphere. It contains dead space gas, some of the alveolar gas, and fresh gas. The patient gets ventilated with the fresh gas and gas in the corrugated tube, that is, a mixture of fresh gas and alveolar gas depending upon the fresh gas flow. Rebreathing can be avoided by keeping the fresh gas flow high, that is, 1.5 to 2 times minute ventilation or by increasing the expiratory pause so that fresh gas can push exhaled gases down the tubing toward the reservoir bag to be vented out. Other factors that influence the composition of gas mixture with which the patient gets ventilated are the same as for spontaneous respiration namely respiratory rate and tidal volume. The good thing about controlled ventilation is that these parameters can be controlled by the anesthesiologist to maintain normocarbia even with rebreathing. Fresh gas flow recommended is 70 to 100 milliliters per kg per minute with tidal volume of 10 milliliters per kg and frequency between 12 and 14 per minute. These are the good and bad about the Baines circuit. It becomes important that the users know how to assemble the parts and ensure its proper function. It's common in exams where students are asked to assemble the Baines circuit. The main part of the circuit is the coaxial tube containing the corrugated tube and the inner fresh gas tube. This tube has two ends, one for fresh gas inner tube and APL valve, and the other end for the patient. The one end of the APL fits into the main tube and other end accepts the reservoir bag. The patient end is connected to the ET tube. We just have to remember to put all the parts on one end and keep the other part empty for the patient. The pre-use check for Bain's circuit involves checking the structural and the functional integrity of the inner tube, outer tube, reservoir bag and the APL valve. In this regard, there are four important examinations to be carried out namely, physical examination, inner tube occlusion test and oxygen flush test for inner tube, and positive pressure test for outer tube and APL valve. The physical test involves checking breakage, kinks, and disconnection of the parts of the system. The positive pressure test checks the integrity of the APL valve and outer tube. It is done by occluding the patient end, closing the APL valve and pressurizing the system which fills the reservoir bag. This means that the outer tube is not leaking. The APL valve is then opened. The bag should deflate easily if the valve is working properly. Outer tube integrity should also be checked by following the simplest innovative method. The operator wets the hands with spirit and the air is blown through the tube. Leak will produce chillness in the hands. Also known as bobbin dip test or Folex Crempton Smith test, Inner tube occlusion test establishes the integrity of the inner tubing. The test is performed by setting a low flow on the oxygen flow meter and occluding the inner tube with a finger or with a barrel of a small syringe at the patient end. The position of the bobbin will be indicated on the flow meter. Since the inner tube is occluded, there is an increased pressure inside the inner tube. 
This forces the bobbin to dip in the flow meter due to back pressure if the inner tube is not broken and connected correctly. In oxygen flush or PEFIX test, the circuit is first connected to the gas outlet port, APL valve is closed and the reservoir bag is filled partially just like in positive pressure test by occluding the patient end. The patient end is then released whereby we can still find the reservoir bag partially filled. The oxygen flush is activated after that. Due to the Venturi effect the high flow from the inner tube at the patient end will create a negative pressure in the outer exhalation tubing and this will suck gas from the bag and the bag will deflate. If the inner tube is not intact, this maneuver will cause the bag to inflate slightly.